God bless you. Love Gospel Assembly, friends, family, and YouTube viewers. Welcome to our Nuggets of Hope, our series called A Living Hope. Today, I want to speak to you about the hope found in Christ Jesus. So I've taken the privilege of marrying or connecting two scriptures that will help me unfold the hope found in Christ Jesus, our Lord, the Savior of the world. So I have taken 1 Peter 1 and 3, verses chapter 1, verse 3, and John 3, 16, to help me unfold this. 1 Peter 1, 3 reads, Praise be to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This new birth, the born-again experience, brought forth from love. The love of the Father, which is found in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This hope, this hope found in Christ Jesus because of love. So these two scriptures are connected by hope. Hope in a hopeless world, in a dark world, in a world where there is violence, where there's rebellion. Hope. God the Father gives us the gift of newness, of life through Jesus Christ. The hope, Jesus is our hope. As I look at these scriptures, I can't help but to think of Christmas, the Christmas season, the advent, the arrival, the birth of our new save, of our savior, the hope of mankind for a better life, the long and awaited Messiah, the Christ came, Born, not during good times, born during difficult times, during dark times. Isaiah 9, 6 and 7 says, For us, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah prophesies of the coming Messiah during tumultuous times, just like today. God speaks through Isaiah and says in, in chapter 13, Isaiah chapter 13, verse 11, he says, I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for their sins. God speaks these words to the prophet Isaiah during dark period of spiritual corruption, ritualism, idolatry. The scene during Isaiah's time and today are very similar. They were in a serious moral and spiritual decline, pagan worship. The wealthy oppressed both men and women. And even both women and women left their responsibilities for caring for their homes for carnal pleasures. The world in its sinful condition needs a savior today just as much as they needed a savior then. God in his holiness punishes, but in his mercy and love forgives. And because of his mercy and love, God sent his only son to take the sins of mankind upon himself. He took our place on the cross. He died and resurrected to give us a living hope. Jesus, the hope of glory came down to earth with the purpose to save mankind. And it brings me to that verse, that, that Christmas scripture that we find in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping, watching over, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said, do not be afraid. I bring to you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today, in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is our living hope. Jesus, the word who was with God and is God became flesh and made his dwelling 
among us. That's found in chapter in John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14. Jesus became flesh and walked among mankind. John 1, 4 and 5 says, In him was life, and life was the was and, and the life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Jesus came as the light into a very dark world, covered by sin. God the Father. In his love for us, sent his son Jesus, who stood in the gap and atoned for the shedding of innocent blood by the shedding of his own innocent blood. Second Corinthians 5.21 addresses that. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus is our living hope. Let, us, let me share a quote from Biola University, the Advent Project, that says, Advent celebrates the incarnation, Jesus becoming flesh, the mind-blowing reality of the God of the universe becoming a man, living, breathing, walking on earth. Hallelujah. Our hope is in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the living hope because he's alive today. We serve a living God. We have life in Christ through our re repentance and acceptance of this wonderful gift of life, eternal life. If we believe, we will not perish, but have everlasting life. Ephesians 2.8 says that for by grace, you have been saved through faith and not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God. Our hope is Jesus Christ. Let me conclude with this. Our living hope is also the hope of Jesus' second coming. Our hope is faith in the future. He promised that he will return for his bride, the church. Titus 2.13 puts it this way, while we wait for the blessed hope. While we wait for the blessed hope, hallelujah. The appearing of the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. While we wait. This Christmas, this Christmas season, this Advent season, while we wait, let's give away our hope of the glory of God to a dying world. Let's give the gift of Jesus away to others. And Biola University puts it again this way. But even as it celebrates Christ's arrival on earth, talking about the Advent, Christ's arrival on earth and its rescue of it, Advent also looks patiently to the future of the return of Christ to bring all things to right. And once again, for all, except today, the tension of the already and the not yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us in this week's Nuggets of Hope. We hope you continue to join us and we hope that you are blessed by each teaching. You can join us on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. God bless you.